following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Precepts of alchemy. Fertility and mastery. Such is the title of the lecture related with the precepts of alchemy according to the book of Zohar that we are given in this uh, course. As you see there, in blue letters, the Hebrew words related with the title, para va rava, which is commonly translated into English as grow and multiply, or be fruitful and multiply. But according to alchemy, we have translated uh, this uh, uh, para varava as be fertile and master, or become a master. Because in Hebrew, these uh, words are associated with many means. So you will see how the meaning of this uh, growing multiply is taken by different uh, uh, translations in the wrong way and how alchemically should be translated. This, of course, relates to the different uh, theories, beliefs, that, and dogmas that uh, people have uh, built, built in relation with this grow and multiply because they don't go deeply into what alchemy and Kabbalah uh, explain about it. This is what Master Samael on the Or in his book, Treatise of Sexual Alchemy, <coughs> uh, states that the different theories concepts and dogmas that the different denominations, religions have made in relation with Bible is really uh, like a, that golden statue that Nabucodonosor built according to the book of Daniel. When you go in the Bible and read the book of Daniel, that between parentheses, is a book written in Aramaic, which is very close to Hebrew. We will say that Aramaic is the mother of the Hebrew language. So in there, in the chapter 3, Daniel, the prophet, uh, talks about how Nebuchadnezzar built a statue of gold and commanded all people to worship that statue. And if somebody doesn't do it, it will be severely punished. 
Of course, all of that is an alchemical Kabbalistic symbol that is understood when we know Kabbalah and alchemy. But when people read that, literally, they really believe that uh, those three young men or Jews, the people of Judah, that refuse to kneel and to worship that statue really existed because Nebuchadnezzar threw them into a furnace to punish them. But that's an alchemical statement because it's impossible for somebody of flesh and bone to be put into a furnace and on to, to get burned. But if you know Kabbalah and alchemy, you understand what you're reading. But still people, you know, believe that really there were physical people that were put there and that by the grace of God, they didn't die. We, of course, know that that's a false concept, false theory, false dogma of uh, ignorant people. And that's what the master called the statue of gold. So the statue of gold symbolizes that. An idol, in other words. Because people usually, when they talk about idols, they think uh, uh, that somebody has a carved uh, statue in their home and, and worship that statue, and that's to worship an idol. But psychologically, Kabbalistically, alchemically, to worship an idol is not to see the reality of what you're reading in the sacred book. So instead of following the right, the truth of what is written, you will start following an idol, meaning some image or dogma or theory or belief that you are building in your head and thinking that that is the way that the Bible or the sacred book is showing it. And that's why the person that followed that uh, gather people that think like himself or herself and they make a denomination and thinking that that's the way to follow the truth that is written in the Bible or any sacred book. And this is how the denominations exist in this day and age. That they really are worshiping idols. But they don't, do not know that the word idol refers precisely to that concept that we have in the head. Because if we investigate our mind, we will find also that we have a lot of idols. Which means concepts, theories that are wrongly comprehended. And then we think that that is the truth. Mm? So that's precisely in the very strict alchemical, alchemical, uh, Kabbalistic uh, point of view, we should stop worshiping idols by knowing the truth of what we're reading, which is very difficult when we are so stuck in certain dogmas. And that's precisely what the book of Daniel shows as the statue of gold that Nabucodonosor, the king of Babylon, built and forced the people to worship. I'm going to read for you a quotation related with it in order for us to understand because at the bottom of it there is the explanation that the Master Samael gives related with that way of comprehending things in the wrong way. Nabucodonosor, full of fury, bound Shadrach, Mesach, and Abednego, three people, and cast them into the midst of the burning fiery furnace and commanded that they should hit the furnace seven times more that it was want to be heated. And then the Bible states, And these three men, Shadrach, 
Mesach and Abednego fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, was astonished and rose up in haste and spoke and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True king, true all king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the son of Elohim. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace, and spoke and said, Shadrash, Mesach, and Abednego, you servants of the most high goddess, come forth. You see, in Aramaic is written, Ella, Elia, Elio, which means the highest goddess. But the Bible translates that as the most highest god. But is the word is Ella, which means God, the goddess. So you can figure out alchemically that it is related to the lower level of the tree of life, which is Yasad, the lower waters of Ella. Because El Haim is above and Ella Yam is below. Come forth and come hither. Then Sadrash, Mesach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had not power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire has passed on them. Then Nabucodonosor spoke and said, Blessed be the goddess of Sadrash, Mesach, and Abednego, who had sent his Malachim, his angel, and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and had changed the king's word, and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any Ella, any goddess, except their own Ella. In the Bible, the translation says, except their own God. Anyhow, the main point here is their own, right? And that the word is Ella, goddess. Matthew Samael on the or stated in the book, Treatise of Sexual Alchemy, the following. The statue of gold that the unhurt young Jews did not worship is the abominable food, the filthy food of theosophy, spiritism, pseudo rosacrucianism politics, and other food offered unto idols. That abominable food of Jezebel's table is the statue of gold that the young unhurt man did not worship. The furnace was lit seven times. These are the seven distillations in alchemy. These are the seven serpents that we must raise upon the reed. These are the seven days of our profound creation. The seven days of Genesis. Sadrash, Mesach, and Abednego are the physical, vital, and astral bodies. The four young men who was like uh, Ben Elohim, the son of God, is the Christ mind of anyone who is liberated from the four bodies of sin. Therefore, it is necessary to ignite the fiery furnace seven times in order to convert ourselves into kings and queens, into lords of the universe. Samael on the earth. So as you see there, we are explaining with this uh, 
simple quotation that when you read in the book of Genesis, be fruitful and multiply or grow and multiply is not related as many people think that God make animals and human beings and said grow and multiply. When if he doesn't do it or don't say, doesn't say it, they are going to do it anyhow. Because God is that force that is within everybody. What means everybody means in every physicality. And that's the force that multiplies mechanically in the physical world. But what Moses wrote in the book of Genesis is something alchemical. If we take literally, as we translate it, grow and multiply, well, we have to understand that that growing and multiplying that the Bible talks about in a very literal way, it doesn't relate to the physical level. Because even if you don't read the Bible, everybody multiplies and grows, right? But if you read Genesis, which is the book of alchemy, and then you will understand that that statement is for the alchemist. That once you know the meaning of what we are teaching here, you have to grow and multiply inside. In other words, one multiplies and grows when we are, one creates the internal bodies. That's why Matthew Samael on the or states that the three young men that were thrown in the fire furnace symbolizes the physical body, vital body, and astral body. But solar, because this is how we create. Remember that we stated that the first serpent of fire that we awake through sexual alchemy creates in the internal worlds what we call the body of liberation. The second serpent builds the Tosoma psychic gong, which in Buddhism is called the bodhicitta. And the astral body, of course, which is a solar astral body that is being built in the third initiation of major mysteries. And the fourth, as you see there, that appears there as a miracle in the fiery furnace is a mental solar body that the alchemist is creating. So that is what the Bible said, grow and multiply, means Alchemically speaking, you have to create all of those elements within you with sexual transmutation. And of course, if you see in the graphic, in the right side, there is an angel. Because Nabucodonosor says, the God of Sadrach Mesach in Abednego had sent his angel. In Aramaic said, his Malachim which is the same. That Malachim is Tifereth. In other words, you find there five bodies. The fifth one is, is the human soul, the Malachim, is symbolized in the graphic. And in the right side is a rabbi or a priest that symbolizes the monad. Remember that the monad is a stated, is a union of Buddhi and Adman, or the divine soul and the spirit, what in Kabbalah we call Chesed and Geburah. So, of course, Chesed and Geburah is represented by the priest there with a book in his hands. And the rest is, of course, all the internal bodies that we have to create in order to reach that level that the Bible called Rava. And that is translated in English as Rabbi, Master. So in other words, what this statement says alchemically is, grow up, become a master, multiply, right? But if you read literally, you think that you have to become a literal intellectual master or a teacher, an instructor, a rabbi, 
and multiply to have children. Interpreted that literally, that, that's absurd. Because in order to grow spiritually, you, know, uh, you, you have to know alchemy. It's not by multiplying like any animal multiplies in the earth as you are going to grow spiritually. But by taking that in the, that sense, then you understand what the Bible says. And the sea God, El Chaim, blessed them, saying, Be fertile and master, and fill the waters. Hamaim. What are those waters? We learned that Hamaim backwards is me and ma, the waters that we have in the spinal column and in our sexuality. And then says, after that, the book repeats. Be mim or be mime, which translated into English means the waters in me. But the Bible says, and fill the waters and repeat the waters. But why is repeated twice? Because we have two types of waters inside. And that's why in the end it says, the waters in me, owing me the waters. That is not referring the waters outside, but inside of your self and yours, inside of your psychosomatic uh, entity that relates with the two waters. And let angels strive in the earth. You see, there's another statement, a chemical there, right? And, 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 and in other words, it says, and let angels multiply in the earth. Right? But if you understand that your physicality is Malkut, the earth, that statement is telling you, multiply your archetypes. Multiply the angelic forces in you, in your earth. Right? Because if we go into our psychology in our earth, as we explain in other lectures, what is what are we going to discover? Angels? We only discover demons. Lust, anger, pride, envy, gluttony, laziness. All of that is, they, they are demons inside of us. But the, what Genesis is telling us here is, multiply your angels. And the angel has to multiply. How you are going to multiply if you are fornicating? How are you going to create those bodies that uh, in the book of Daniel are showing in the fiery furnace, which obviously is the furnace of sexual alchemy between men and women. And this is where you find that fire. And that's why when somebody transmutes the sexual energy and he doesn't fornicate, the smell of fire is not in him. In other words, the smell of passion because that is a symbol of, of that fire, passion or fire that is, is obviously in the sexual act. You transmute it, you create inside of you your angel, your solar bodies. And that is precisely that statement that the book of Sohard uh, is showing us in, the, in this lecture in relation with the precepts of alchemy, according to the Zohar. In the second uh, graphic, you find precisely how me and ma relate to our spinal column. Me, who means who in Hebrew, relates to the head and to that. <coughs> Ma, who means what in Hebrew, relates to Yesod and to sexuality. And in the middle, you find a spinal column, which is, of course, what the Bible calls Jacob's ladder. And that Jacob's ladder is the same Israel the sun of the two waters that rise in the spinal column that we call Kundalini, or that we call the brass and serpent, 
uh, we call it uh, uh, in different ways, is that serpent that rises in the spinal medulla of those that are working with these two waters. That is precisely the firmament that the book of Genesis talks about. We read in the Zohar, it says, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Hamaim. If you observe, Hamaim is here. Ha Maim. Right? The waters below is Hama Hamaim. In our psychosomatic system. And the firmament is in the middle of them. That firmament is the spinal column. Uh, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 6. By firmament, it meant the interior Adam, which is also Israel, who is the letter Vav, the spinal column, receptive of that, the knowledge of a spiritual truth, that the waters above, and of earthly or alchemical things, Yesod, the waters below. Me, who shall heal thee? This is the highest scale of the mystery, the mystery of being, upon whom depended all things. He shall heal and strengthen thee. Me of the heavens above is the highest pole, the cerebral spinal fluid. Ma of the heavens below is the lower pole, the genital fluids. And the heritage of Jacob, the letter Vav, because also Jacob is related with the letter Vav. The spine, which is the ladder that stands between these extremities of the heavens. And the middle bar, which is the bar, the spine, in the midst of the thorax boards, shall pass through from end to end. This is an exodus. When you write that, I mean, exodus is talking in chapter 26, verse 28, about the tents made in the wilderness, right? The boards, how you had to build it. But if you know alchemy, you know that it's referring to the physical body. The thorax are the boards, and in the middle, in order to hold that board, or the boards of the thorax, which forms your chest and your back, the middle bar is the main point to support that. That's the spinal column. Let the waters be gathered together in one place. That place is the bar, the spinal column. Israel who accepted the law. You see? It doesn't mean here that somebody accepted fanatically the law written in the books. No, it's referring to the law of chastity that we are talking about, the law of alchemy. And let the dry land or barren element appear. That is, the fornicator people who unwillingly to receive the law of chastity have remained spiritually barren and sterile. So that's a meaning. Whether dry, the dry land that will be the outcome of transmutation, your inner bodies will appear. But in this case, Sohar says, let the dry land of barren element appear. Meaning those that do not follow the sexual alchemy, the chastity, are those people that worship the statue of gold. That they, with their heart, think that that's the way to worship God. By believing in something that has no sense. Because if you put your senses to work, see how those three young men went into the furnace and didn't get burned? How did the fourth appear? And who is this angel that was sent? And... That happens in Babylon, in the time of Daniel. And Daniel is Dan. Dan means justice, which is Geburah. 
all of that is telling us something hidden that we should learn, not to take everything literally, but alchemically and cabalistically in order to understand. And that's why we put that there strictly from the Zohar and our explanations in order for you to see that it's in relation with yourself, with your psychosomatic uh, being. Psycho, from psyche, means your soul. And soma, body, which mean, will be not only the physical body, but all the bodies that we have within. So, this explanation is necessary in order for us to understand what is coming next. Let us read the Zohar again. And Elohim said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. The word Elohim is composed of two words. El and Chaim or Hayam, which signify the sea god or this, the water god. The word Hayam, the sea, has the same letters as Yama, which means also sea, by which the scripture teaches that all divisions of opinion in the head, of course, symbolized by the feminine term sea, Yama, is right and just when its object is the glory of Elah, the goddess, the divine female, which is in relation with the sexual waters. As then, El Hayam, the sea god, becomes united to Elah Yam, the sea goddess. In other words, in Christian terms, we will say, this is how the Holy Spirit is united with Mary, which takes the same symbols. When, however, this is not so, El and Ela, God and Goddess, Ava and Aima Elohim, remain separated and detached in Yama or Hayam, the sea, then symbolizes the great ocean or abyss of darkness in which hell is enshrouded and concealed. When Hamayim, the sexual waters of Elayam, the sea goddess, became separated into male female, then El Hayam, the sea god, the Holy Spirit, interposed and became the point of union between them. And harmony prevailed and dissension ceased. The waters above the firmament, the male part. Those below, the female. Those above, the cerebral spinal fluid, were designed as El Hayam, the sea god, and distinguished by the first letter He in the divine name Yod He Vav He. Thus, below the genital fluids of El Hayam, the sea goddess, were called Adonai. This is what uh, the Sohar states, which means the Lord. He in the divine name, which is, of course, the second letter He of, of, uh, of the na holy name of Hebav He. But we said better. It's better said Adonia. Because in order to say Adonia, which is a female name of the divine mother, we are only the letter He at the end of Adonai, which is Yama or Ima, the Lordess, the Divine Mother. Although the mediation of Elohim took place on the second day, unity and harmony did not begin to prevail only on the third day, 
when, as the scripture states, Elohim saw that the third day was good, which is not affirmed in the first and second days of the work of Genesis. Do you realize that when you read the book of Genesis, you start talking about in the second day, let us separate the waters from the waters and let the fir and learn it to make a firmament, is what the second day says. But when you read at the end, it doesn't say, and God said it was good. It doesn't say that. And in the third day, it doesn't say also that that there was good. At the end, it doesn't say that in the third day, uh, in the uh, first day, of course, it doesn't say that it was good. Only in the third day is when you read that God start, uh, state, uh, start saying, and that day was good. Because the creation of the astral body is good. It means that you can reach the, or rise the serpent in the physical body, in the vital body. And we will say that that is okay. But our clinic is speaking, only by rising the third serpent, then you create the astral body. And that is not okay. That is good for your inner being. And this is what alchemically is stated here. It was in the third day, the third initiation of Mayor Mysteries, that the letter Vav, you see, which is the spinal column, entered in the divine name and took up his position between the two letters He, Da'at above and Yesod below. This interposition and mediation of Elohim between Ha Mayim, the waters, above and those below, the letter Vav, the firmament, is further symbolized by the waters of the river Jordan in Joshua chapter 3, verse 16. So hard. It means that if you read the, the book of Jesus, you see, I'm telling you, the book of Jesus, because Joshua means Savior. In Hebrew, and it's related in English are Jesus. So after the five books of Genesis, people call that uh, book that appears there, Joshua. But in John Gnosticism, we call it the book of Jesus. Because it's, it's Joshua is related at, at Jesus in, in English. So you read Joshua or Jesus, whatever, chapter 3, verse 16, uh, is where... Joshua is taking all the archetypes of Israel to the river Jordan. And as he's showing us here in the Zohar that that river Jordan is your spinal column. The transition or the passing of all the forces that you have below in your physicality, which is Israel, into the other land, into the other side, is a long process of alchemy. Hmm? And Joshua does it because he is the Savior. That is what Joshua means, Savior. So here continues the Zohar with reference to the six precepts contained in the words increase and multiply. Para, va, rava in Hebrew. The one who conforms thereto increases the waters of Nahera. You see, this is the word that when you read in the, in the Bible, the word Naher means river. But if you add the letter He at the end, it relates to the river on your physicality, and it's called Nahera. And that Nahera means brightness, light, in Hebrew also. So you feel here that that river that the book of Genesis talks about is not an ordinary river. Remember that river Nahera was divided in four heads that we talk about already. The celestial river of life, which never become dried up, but rather augmented by the birth of every human soul. Ben Elohim, children of God, Tifereth when it descends on to the earth, plain, Malkut, is accompanied by two attendant angels. 
Okay, I, I'm reading here about the multiplications or augmenting of birth of children. You're not talking about that in order to prove that you are doing the alchemical thing, you, you have to have five, six, seven, eight children in the physical world. No, no, no. The proof that the Sohar says here that the celestial river of life, which never becomes dried up, but rather augmented by the birth of children, it means Beni Elohim, children of God, of transmutation, not children of fornication. And if you want to see that, when, when your astral body starts building and your solar body appears within you, that's a proof that you are utilizing this Nahera or Naher, the book of Genesis, in the right way. The Zohar after that says, every human soul, Tifereth, when it descends onto the earth plane, which is Malkut, is accompanied by two attendant angels. One on the right side of it, Netzach. The other on the left, Hod, as it is stated in the Bible. In the Psalm, chapter 91, verse 11. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. You see, those angels that the book of Sohar, or the Psalm 91, is referring, not referring to angels coming from, from certain places. No. It means when the, the human soul, which is different, descends on the earth in the physicality, is because that individual already reached the fifth initiation. Then the human soul enters into the physicality, accompanied by two angels. I mean, two solar bodies. Because obviously, in order to reach Tiferet, you had to first reach Hod and Netzach. And that are the two angels that the book of uh, uh, Psalms talks about. If, however, the human soul does, not, does wrong, they become his accusers. That's unquestionable. Because the astral body isn't related with emotions. And the mental body, Netzach, is in relation with the mind. If you start doing the wrong thing with psychological elements, egos, in your mind or in your, through your heart, they become your accusers. Hmm? That's what the Bible says, that the sins of the fathers will fall into the children, to the children and to the third and fourth generation. The third and fourth generation is hot in Netzach. So if you behave wrong, Nobody is going to accuse you. That's why when Gnostics comes and they are behaving in the wrong way, they think that I'm going to accuse them. Who am I in order to accuse anybody? Their own emotions and mind, mental uh, uh, negative thoughts, are accusing them already. Before their own God. So, if you are following the right path, God knows because your emotions are handled in the right way and your mind also, your thoughts. If you are not doing it, they are accusing you. So that is the alchemical statement that we have to understand. And that's why we put this graphic there. Because these two uh, forces also, also relate to, or two angels, relate to Ida and Pingala. Let us continue reading the Zohar. There really are three protecting angels to a good human soul, as we read. You see, after that uh, statement uh, said by Shimon bar Hohai, another rabbi, another master says, there really are three protecting angels to a good human soul, as we read. If there be a malak, with him or an interpreted one among a thousand to plead his uprightness. If there be a malak, refers to Tifereth, the first, the causal body, and interpreted to Netzach, the second, the mental solar body, 
One among a thousand, Hod, the third, the astral body. You see here, this is very important here. It means that we also have three accusers, not only two, because Tifereth is also above. Right? This is what uh, is what when he says one among a, among a thousand, we talk about that in other lectures. That thousand in Hebrew is Aleph. Mm -hmm. And that's why that one among the thousand is the astral body. Why the astral body? Because on one thousand that search for this alchemical Kabbalistic truth, one finds me. This is stated. And of one thousand that finds me, one follows me. And of 1,000 that follows me, one is mine. You see the progression here arithmetically? But the, the secret of this statement is 1,000, which means the letter Aleph. When people read that, they mean, always imagine 1,000 people looking for the Lord and finally find it, right? No. 1,000 is the letter Aleph. That is a symbol of the spinal column. Because the letter Aleph is... A letter Vav with two Jods, one above and the other below. These two Jods symbolize the two waters, the head and the sex. And the spinal medulla, the Vav, dividing. That means the one that finds the alchemical aspect of this doctrine is the one that will follow. And the one among a thousand that this... Uh, so her statement is telling here is the astral body because it's the first solar body that appears from the letter Aleph, which is the spinal column and the two waters. That is the first one among Aleph, among a thousand. Of course, there is another one, but that is that what Kabbalistically, alchemically, you understand what you read. Rabbi Shimon replied and said, as a matter of fact, there are five guardian angels to each person. For the scripture further proceeds. He will be gracious unto him and will say, deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. He will be gracious, specifies Yesod, the fourth, the vital body. Willis, he will say, the not Malkut, the fifth, the physical body. In other words, you said, why he will say is the fifth? Well, I am saying it, and I am physically here. That is what you have to understand. Then said Ravi Pinchus, or Pincus, which is uh, Joseph, Ravi Joseph. It's another word for it. Thy words are not altogether exact. For as much as he will be gracious, refers to the Holy One. Bina, the Holy Spirit. Since compassion and graciousness belong only to him in Yesod. Thou speakest truly, replied Ravi Shimon. For whoever ignores the precept be fertile and multiply, obstructs the flow, of course, of Nahera, Naher, the celestial river of life, better said, river of light, and thus violates and profanes the Vav, the spinal column, the holy covenant. Of such is written, they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of men that have transgressed against me. Isaiah chapter uh, 66, 24. Against me, because this is a sin against God, the Holy Spirit in Yesod. The soul of such people will never enter Tifereth onto the palace of the king, which is Melech, the Malachim, but be cast forth to live and dwell among the carcasses in Klipoth, because this is what Klipoth means, empty shells carcasses 
the darkness and error of fornicators in earth life. You see? Do you see there? Do you understand? Of course, the contradiction here that apparently the Rabbi Pinchus is saying is not a contradiction. Because the vital body relates really to the fourth, but also relates to Bina. Because when you see the tree of life, you know that Bina rules Yesod. And whosoever breaks in Yesod the holy covenant, which is the covenant of fire, right? The pact of fire, which is Brit Esh, which is Bereshit, a broken. Brit Esh or Bereshit means the pact of fire that you perform in the sexual act. It's not a pact of fire that somebody is going to put his hand in a fire and get burned and another one is going to say, this is a pact that we are doing here with fire. No. The pact of fire that we're talking here is when men and women are in the sexual act performing sexual alchemy. That is Brit Esh, the pact of fire in which you walk the path. And that is in Yesod, because Yesod relates to the sexual organs, to the lower waters, which are the genital fluids. If you break that, then you are breaking the law against Bina Elohim, which is the Holy Spirit. And that's why it says there that that is a sin against God. That's why the Bible says all sins are forgiven, except the sins against the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost is inside. This is precisely what Paul of Tarsus says in Corinthians. I don't remember now the chapter or the verse, but it says, after explaining this, he says, what? You don't know that your physical body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and that he dwells in you? And that you fornicate, you break the law against the Holy God. And he will punish you with death. That is written. The day that you eat of that fruit, you will die. That's precisely a beautiful statement. Now, in the next graphic, we have this beautiful Buddhist picture associated with a quotation of the Master Samael on the or in order for you to understand what he wrote and what we are explaining here about Nahera. Matthew Samael stated in the book of uh, Igneous Rose the following. The hierarchies related with the elemental department of the fig tree are responsible for applying the karma to all evil ones, sodomites and to all sexually degenerated ones who are so abundant in this humanity. The name of the governing angel of this elemental department of nature is Nahera. The elementals of this elemental department of the fig tree use white tunic and are children of extraordinary beauty. The white tunic represents chastity and sanctity. The members of all the spiritualist schools hate chastity and they skillfully avoid it by searching for an escape through the false door of their theories. Their same weakness, their same lack of willpower causes them to search for subtle escapes in order to avoid the problem of chastity. So the Master Samael, of course, already wrote about this in Ignus Rose, and he explains that the fig tree, which is a tree that appears in many parables in the New Gospel. And it, when you read the Gospel of Matthew or Luke, etc., and all of them, you find that Jesus is looking for uh, a fruit from a fig tree, and because the fig tree has no fruit, he's cursing the, the tree. And the, free, and, and the tree withers. Hmm? But of course, if you read that literally, you think that the master uses is walking in the street, etc., and see a fig tree, and it's cursing the tree because it has no, has no figs. That's ridiculous. That's a symbol. 
That fig tree symbolizes the feminine sexual waters, whether you are a male or a female. If you are using the sexual feminine waters in the wrong way, Nahera knows it. Nahera is the angel that controls the forces of the fig tree, which are connected to all the sexual genitalia of all men and women. When you clairvoyantly see the forces, the magnetic electricity force that enters in the fig tree, you discover that it is the same sexual force, same energy, that vibrates in your genitalia, whether you are male or female. And that's why those elementals that dwell in those fig trees apply the karma to the one that is using those fluids in the wrong way. And that's why the Bible, that is a book of wisdom, tells us in the second chapter of the book of Genesis about the river Naher. That in Hebrew is Naher, river. But in other books of the Bible, they also use the word at the end with the letter He, and you read it, Nahera, which is the same name that the master gives for the elemental of the fig tree, Nahera. And that Nahera is precisely that solar light that descends from Chochmah, the solar logos, and divides, as we explain in the lectures, in four heads. And we explain that those four heads are the sexual waters of men and women. We explained that in the, in the previous lecture. So I hope that you are reading those lectures in order to understand what we're explaining here. Because it's necessary for you to read, especially Prakriti, Elohim, in order to understand this uh, following lecture. Okay. So now let us enter into the seventh precept. We were talking about the sixth. You wonder why the sixth? The sixth commandment, uh, a commandment according to Christianity is, you shall not fornicate. Now you understand the meaning of it, right? Let us study the seventh precept. The seventh precept has reference to the circumcision of male children on the eighth day of birth. That is, of course, the children of God, alchemically speaking. We know that there are a lot of uh, uh, orthodox denominations that they circumcise babies at the eighth day. That is just a symbol, like the symbol of baptism that is celebrated in all religions. It's a symbol that is related always with a sexual alchemy sexual transmutation, the same as, as uh, circumcision. In the eighth initiation, we talk about that in a previous lecture, about how the initiate has to enter uh, into the eighth initiation after annihilating all the ego, all the lust, by which bodily impurity is taken away of the celestial region whither souls come forth to the incarnated on earth, Bina is one of them. Remember that Bina is the Holy Spirit. The very end of Bina is Malkut. So when the Sohar is talking here about the dissension of celestial regions of those souls into the physical body, One of them, the eight in order, is termed Haya. Haya in Hebrew means living. This is the reason why circumcision is performed on the eighth day of birth. In the ancient book of Enoch, the course of Nahera, the celestial river of life, better said, heavenly river of light, is described as resembling the letter Yod. 
or creative Shakti potential that we talk in other lectures that we get when we transmute, that's the Yad, which enters into the composition of the 72 divine names imprinted in the body of a child at time of birth and denotes its purity. When you read that, you might think, oh, it's referring to any child that when he's born, he has all the 72 names of God because he's pure. Alchemically, what he's stating here is what we talk. That's why we put the graphic of the resurrection of Christ in the right side. It means that anyone that reaches the eighth initiation of major mysteries, which is associated with what we explain in other lectures about the third selection. We explain that the first selection is formed by all of us that share this knowledge. And all of those that study the doctrine. That's the first selection. The second selection we stated are those ones that reach Tiferes. And that if they take the direct path, they eventually will be members of the third selection. And that third selection is related with the seventh precept, which means there's resurrection. That means that those souls that descend on the earth in the physicality, in the physical body, have in themselves the 72 names of God because they are pure. I cannot accept that a baby, ordinary baby of any religion, has the 72 names of God written. That is uh, described as many will describe that. Oh, this is our, all, all the Israelites that are born. They have the 72 names of God. No, it's not that. Because how is somebody have the 72 names of God within with the ego alive? That's incong incongruency. Cannot be. Only those that annihilate the complete ego that died on the cross as symbolized by Master Jesus. That the cross is the phallus and the vagina united, meaning sexual alchemy, all the process of sexual transmutation, and finally annihilate the whole ego in that process and pass through the process of resurrection and enter into the earth. That's the new earth, new physicality. Of course, they have the 72 names of God in them, symbolized by the letter Yod, because the letter Yod is the Shakti potential. It means that that Shakti potential with solar energy is shiny in all of the archetypes of Israel within the resurrected master. And then we can say, That is pure. Moses, a resurrected master, that has the 72 names of God imprinted in his own body. Jesus, Mohammed, Buddha, Quetzalcoatl, and all those great resurrected masters that have no ego inside, they have the 72 names of God in them because they are pure. But To say that we are having those 72 names of God because we were circumcised physically, no. That's just, in Italian, Bologna. <laughs> Let us follow in this. I see that's in order to hit your emotional center and to understand what we're talking about here. <clears throat> okay, let's continue this Ohar. Let us see the next graphic. Isn't that a beautiful graphic? There we see again the spinal column. In the head of that spinal column is written L, which means God in Hebrew, and related to Chesed, because that's the sacred name of Chesed in the Tree of Life, L. And many times we have stated in our lectures that L that the spinal column is the throne of El, the throne of the innermost, the throne of Hesed, the, 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 our own particular spirit. And then we have vibrating in the head, the letter Yad, which sounds E. And then we have in the heart, letter He, that sounds A. 
And in the very bottom, in Yesod, in the sexual organs, we have the letter Vav, which sounds O oh, in Hebrew. When we read all the letters from top to the, to the bottom, we read Eliyahu. And who is Eliyahu? Eliyahu is translated in English as Elijah, the prophet Elijah. Well, let us read what the Zohar states. The words, and fowl that shall fly above the earth, allude to Elijah. You see? This is what the book of Genesis says. And let the fowl shall, I mean, fly above the earth. The book of Genesis. And this Zohar says, this is Elijah. So when you read this literally, you mean, oh, the prophet Elijah, Eliyahu? No. He's addressing the spinal column again. That means that those birds or foals that fly above the earth means your physicality, your firmament is your spinal column. The solar light, which are the malachim, the angels, that you build, in your transmutation, what are those? Astral body, mental body, and causal body, right? And that is relation with Hod, Netzach, and Tifereth, right? And that is what the heart says, that is Eliyahu. Because Eliyahu is the solar logos. Iao. The master Samael in the book of uh, Pieces of Fear says, there exists two Iaos. The Yao, the greater, which relates to the solar logos in the solar system, the solar light. But it's also the minor Yao. And who is that minor Yao? The Yao in your physicality. Or related with the creation that you are doing with the solar logos, with the solar light, with Yao, El Yao. In other words, the creation that Hesed in the spinal column, his own throne is doing by hovering between the two waters. That's El Yao. So if you reach the level of mastery, Tifereth, El Yao is seated in your spinal column. That's the chair, that's the throne of El Yao. But if you really that literally, well, you will think that you need a chair there in order for somehow some prophet to come and be seated there in a time when is the baby is circumcised physically. That is a statue of gold that you will worship as Nebuchadnezzar says, worship that. This is wrong. It doesn't mean that. So that's why this says there. This relates to Elijah, who is present whenever the rite of circumcision is performed, when a throne or seat is formed and set specially for him by pronouncing the words, this is Elijah's throne. This is how literally it's written in the Zohar. This is Elijah's throne, right? So nobody sits there. Symbolically, it's okay. But if we take that literally and we think that that is the meaning of that, no. Elias' throne is the spinal column. That is Elias' seat. That's the throne of the, of, in other words, of the innermost. In other words, if you are going to be circumcised in the initiation, in the eighth day, the master observe and examine you. Is Elias seated? In his throne, and you see your spinal column, and you see solar light. Is any ego inside of this person? No. Oh, he can resurrect. He can be circumcised, meaning his lust can be cut completely out of him. And that's precisely the, the symbol, the beautiful symbol of this. If this is neglect, ne neglected, Eliao does not attend. 
And it's because Eliyahu or Elijah symbolizes the innermost. Purify it. It's the right side of the tree of life. If Hesed does not attend to the eight initiation, who is going to resurrect? The ego? The psychological aggregates? Remember, if you count the Sephiroth from the bottom of Malkut to the top, the seventh is Hesed. And that is what the Soharis added as Eliyahu. If Eliyahu is there, then he can enter into the eighth initiation, which is Bina, passing the abyss, which is that from Hesed to Bina. And that's precisely to enter into the third selection. But you cannot enter into the third selection of the Exodus that we are talking here, alchemically speaking, if Eliyahu is not seated in, the, in his throne. Because it's he, the one that enters into the higher selection by uniting himself with Bina Elohim, becoming an Elohim. Furthermore, we read, and Elohim created great whales or fishes, alluding to the two great fishes called Leviathan, symbolizing the male and female sexual principles that manifest themselves in Hamaim, the waters above and below, in every part of the creation. The words in every living soul refer to the sacred name imprinted on the bodies of all incarnated souls coming from Bina, the celestial region called Haya. When Ha Mayim, the waters, brought forth abundantly, denotes the letter Yad, with, with which a sign of sh or sign of Shakti potential, solar potential, the angels above are distinguished from demons below. You see that? So the angels above distinguish from the demons below, which are us, because the Yad, the Shakti potential of the solar light, shines in them. The demons below don't have that shiny solar force. And that's the distinction that the book of Sohar is talking uh, 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 there in every living soul. And also the children of Israel from other people of the earth. When you read this, and the children of Israel from other people of the earth, or they say other nations, you might say, oh, the people in the Middle East that are called Israel, the Israelites are different. That distinguish them because they have that yad in themselves. No, he's not talking about that. He's talking about the archetypes, the alchemists. Talking about transmutation. That is what distinguishes Israel because Israel is the spinal column. The children of Israel are the archetypes that we gather with all the work, a chemical work that we are performing. That's why the Book of Zohar finishes saying, that is to say, the fornicators and idolatrous blessed, I mean, the, the people of the air are related to the fornicator and idolatrous. And then after that, he adds, Zohar adds, blessed is the lot of Israel. What is the lot of Israel? Israel is Tifereth. Tifereth is ruled by the sun. The sun is the sort of light. That arch those archetypes are related to Chochmah. Blessed be the lot of Israel. Right? Those are the blessings that we have received if we perform the work that we are explaining here. But if we read literally, we will say, oh, blessed be the lot of those people that live in the Middle East. And that's wrong. Right? If they perform the work of alchemy that the Zohar is teaching here, of course, they will be blessed. But not only them, because the archetypes of Israel are inside of any human being. 
tree, we develop that, and then we are blessed. That's the lot of Israel. When we know how to read uh, and understand uh, the, the Bible. Every living soul, of course, the, here also we read that every living soul is related with Haya. What is Haya? Haya means life. But it's applied in the Bible in different ways. You always find Hayot, which means animals. Otz Chaim, the tree of life. When the, when the human being, when Adam became a living soul, it says, became a nefesh Haya. In other words, Haya is directly pointing Bina, the Holy Spirit. Because Bina is the head, and below is Malkut. So everything that descends on this planet, Malkut, everything that is incarnated in this philosophical earth, which is our physicality, comes from Bina. Every single living soul comes from Bina, because Bina is the author, the creator of this creation. Hmm? <coughs> so, in other words, from Bina comes Hayot, the living creatures, animals. From Bina comes the resurrected masters, if they perform the work that we are explaining here. We come from Bina too, because Bina rules Yasad, and we were engendered in Yasad when our mother and father were performing the sexual act through fornication. But we are not Chaim, we are Hayot, animals. So everything comes from Haya. That's why we stated in other lectures that commonly we talk about three souls, Nefesh, Neshama, and Ruach. But there are other two souls that scarcely we mentioned. It is Haya and Yehida. Yehida is above Haya. We talk about it in other lectures. But here we are addressing Haya, which is Bina, related with the Logos, with creation. And whether it is a creation through mechanicity comes from Haya. Whether it is a creation through sexual alchemy comes from Haya. So the Holy Spirit is the giver of life in different levels. That's why demons are punished very severely because they are demons thanks to Haya. They utilize the sexual force of Haya, sexual energy, in their own way. So they are punished because every sin is forgiven except the one that utilizes Haya, the life of their sexuality in their own way. And here we find again this beautiful, beautiful graphic of the tree of life. And which the Zohar addresses Shekinah, the Divine Mother. We read the next precept, which is the last one in this lecture. The eighth precept, is that related to generosity, to be shown as proselytism to converts that consent to be circumcised. You might think, oh, if I become circumcised, if I am not, then I will be a convert. No. It's in relation to practice sexual alchemy. That they consent to practice sexual alchemy. In other words, they consent to be circumcised. That is spiritually speaking. And if you want to understand that, read the letters of Paul of Tarsus in the, in the New Testament. He explained what is the two types of circumcision. Physically, all of those that practice that in the tradition. But spiritually, it's called sexual alchemy. To alchemists. 
This in order to enjoy the protection of the sheltering wings of the Shekinah, or divine presence, that guards and defends all of those who in Malkut, forsaking the worship of fornication, or we will say, forsaking the worship of the golden statue of Nebuchadnezzar, which are the demons, from Klippoth, gave themselves or give themselves up to the service of the true God, Shaddai el Chai in Yesod. The true God, the living God, is in your sexual energy. And after that, the Sohar states, let, let the earth bring forth the living soul according to their kind. This is what literally is written. But we explain that verse in this way. Let the brute mercury of the earth, their physicality, bring forth the living soul of the mercury according to their sex. Because the word mina, which is kind in, in Hebrew, is also a word that points to sex, means sex. So, of course, what is the brute mercury? The brute mercury is the sexual energy as we have it in our sexual glands, whether we have it in our ovaries and uterus or in our prostate and testicles. That is called in alchemy brute mercury, which the book of Genesis called uh, the earth. The, our physicality. When you enter into these mysteries of sexual alchemy, and then you accomplish with that verse that says, let the brute mercury of the earth, their physicality, bring forth the living soul. What is the living soul? Nefesh haya is in, 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 in Hebrew. Nefesh is animal. And haya is life. How you are going to bring up the haya, the life, of your nefesh, your animality, which is your physicality, by transmuting your sexual matter. Living soul, or the soul of the mercury in alchemy, is that energy that is extracted from the fluid, sexual fluids, in the sexual act, by the alchemists. And that is what rises in Ida and pingala to the brain. When you practice pranayama, is what you're doing. You are rising the living soul, the soul of the mercury of your semen, feminine or masculine semen, and transforming that. If you are practicing sexual magic, doing the same thing. Therefore, it's more potent, right? It says there, the esoteric alchemical meaning of the words according to their sex, the Bible says according to their kind, is repeated twice in this verse of a scripture. Why? Because it is related to male-female sexual polarities. Right? This is so obvious, according to their kind. The husband is transmuted according to his kind and the woman according to her kind. But at the same time, the two kinds originate the third kind. And uh, the Zohar explains, but we will also explain things there in only to a stand. The sublimation of the living soul of the Mercury towards the winds of Shekinah that denote two spiritual regions, and that is Gebura and Gedula, with many separate nirvanic divisions or localities whither the chaste soul of proselytes, are hats initiates, return after separation from their body. You always wonder, 
where I'm going to be if I die and I don't finish the, the, the work? Well, if you are in chastity, you are going to be either in Geburah or in to Gedula. Those are, that's why we uh, imprinted two wings there at that side in order to see you or to explain you that the wings of the Shekinah are Hesed, I mean, uh, yeah, Hesed and Geburah. That's why in the invocation of Solomon, when we reach Hesed, we said, Hasmalim enlighten me with the forces of the Elohim, or the light of Elohim, and the Shekinah. Hmm? Because they are the wings. You, you remember the wings of the Caduceus of Mercury? Those wings are coming from the lungs. Because the wind symbolizes the wind, the air. And the air are related with the lungs. So at that height is where the angels have the wings. Because the two lungs represents Hesed and Geburah. But internally, when the initiate dies, he goes into those regions. Which in uh, other terms, Sanskrit terms, is called Nirvana. You know that there are many uh, levels of Nirvana. Where the souls go after entering into a process of death in the physical plane. To prove of this, for instance, I remember one uh, missionary that called me many years ago and told me, uh, my wife doesn't like to be in mission. So I'm planning to return to my country, South America. I said, once you enter into the path you cannot go back because when the one that enters into the path of initiation in any level is dealing with the law of karma in different way and the laws of karma deal with them in different manner not like the ordinary people that they don't care that the karma is applied if you return after taking the path of missionary or instructor I think that the karma will follow you according to what, whatever you have. So my advice is don't go back. And he says, thank you. But anyhow, he went back. <laughs> and he was killed by the guerrillas. The guerrillas was trying to steal his car and he went in order to defend his car. That's a stupid, anyhow. And of course, the guerrillas said, oh yeah, boom, boom. Killed him and took the car anyhow. And he died. And of course, uh, mother, family were painful, right? And uh, uh, one day in the astral plane, I saw him wearing a tunic, blue tunic, that you know, blue tunic that symbolizes the body of the soul, and told me, I know your name. What do you mean, my name? I said, I know that we know. No, no, no. I'm reading there in your forehead. Oh, yeah, I said, yeah, I know that. I know your name too. Why are you uh, visiting me? I want to ask you a favor. And I said, what? Please talk with my mother. Tell him to stop crying for me. I am so happy in where I am. I am in those regions there that you know, and I'm so happy. But every time that she's crying because the way that I died, she is pulling me down. And I am really sad. I don't like that because I'm really happy there. Tell him that I'm happy. And every time she cries, she will pull me down. Okay, I said, I will. And then when I talk uh, to his mother, I told her. He told me, please don't cry. Are you crying? Yeah, yeah, I'm crying because my brother. Don't cry for him. He's very happy. And if you think that by crying you are making feel good, no. He feels rotten. He feels bad because he's in those regions. Because the work that we are performing for humanity, whether it was a short work, is being paid in that way. And that's very rare. 
So don't cry for him. He's happy. He told me to tell you that in order to stop. And, and he said, yeah, I'm doing it. Every day I'm just remembering the way that he died, wherever, because he really lied in a terrible manner, right? But I, well, it's okay. He will return anyhow in a new body. So she stopped. And then he said, oh, that was good for him. Because he was enjoying those regions. But the souls go after death, after separation from their bodies. But if they are chaste, but people that think that just because they believe in this or believe in that, they are going to go to heaven. And what about the Holy Spirit? What about Bina? What are they doing with it, their sexual energy? Well, this is precisely what we are pointing here. It's not a matter of believing. It's alchemy. In the next, uh, the next uh, graphic, we have this... Uh, Graphic of Shekinah, the brazen serpent, written in English and Spanish on top of it. You see? Remember that uh, Jehovah Elohim, Bina, told Moses, built uh, in a pole a brazen serpent. This is written in Numbers, verse, I mean, chapter 21. And that's precisely the graphic that we made in order to show that Paul is the spinal column, of course, and the divine serpent of the serpent of brass is there with wings. And the Zohar explains. The region included under the right wing contains two divisions through which pass the souls of the children, bodhisattvas of Israel. You see there? We specify put bodhisattvas. When after psychological death, they ascend from Hesed in the celestial locality. Right? In Bina. That is a call Haya. The left wing with its two divisions, is reserved for the people of Ammon and Moab. All souls, however, whether they come from for Haya or Ammon and Moab, the living souls, differing in their sexuality, being those bodhisattvas of Israel or those proselytes in Egypt, who, as stated, ascend the region under the right wing of the Shekinah, Sohar. So only the Bodhisattvas rise to Bina. It is what Sohar says there, right? Because they are pure. The other resurrected master that goes after resurrection. For instance, Master Samael on Veor in 1976 after passing the ordeal of Job, the eighth initiation, he enters into Binah, higher region, because he had no ego at all. But all the, all the others one that die, they go into the left wind. The left wind is the left uh, uh, pillar of the tree of life. There is also regions of Nirvana there, according to your level, according to your initiation. And if you are working seriously, you will go there. And enjoy. But you will come back. And the Master Samael also will come back. But he, go, he come back triumphant. Resurrected. And Jesus came back after resurrection. But we will enter into a new body and continue our work because we have still the ego alive. Unless we disintegrate the ego in this life. That will be good. Master Samael explains in many of his books. The one that disintegrates his ego before creating solar bodies, he goes very good. But unfortunately, uh, nobody does that. We create further solar bodies and we enter there and still we ego and we die. We go into Moab, right? Into the region of the left. Which is the region, of course, of those that still have ego. You see? It's very clear, right? The region of the left 
are those that still have ego. Who made this? Okay. So do you understand about this? Moab, Ammon in Moab, uh, actually are those uh, tribes that the book of, uh, and in the Bible talks about, related with uh, uh, Lot. When Sodoma and Gomorrah were destroyed, Lot had sexual relation with his two daughters. And the descendants of these two daughters are, that is always considered, of course, part of Israel. But of course, the way that they reproduce is, is incest. And that incest is the meaning of having ego, right? And this is the left side. So if you die, you don't belong to the right side. If you die with ego, you belong to the left side, which is called Moab, uh, the left side of the true life. And you go to a region, if you are in chastity, of course, and will enjoy, as I explained there, here uh, with this uh, missionary that went there after, uh, after dying in a tragical manner because he was stupid. It's, it's truly, right? You shouldn't go back because then the law uh, of karma applies in, like an ordinary person. But if you are in, in the path, any karma that comes to you is because the laws of karma has given you what you owe, but systematically. Yeah? Doesn't mean that you are not going to receive karma. You want to receive it, but according to the law, in order for you to self realize yourself. Either way, you are under the wings of the Shekinah, the Divine Mother. A further allusion to this mystery occurs in the words. And all people shall call you blessed, for you, Tifereth, shall be a delightful land, said Yodhava Sabaoth. <coughs> for this reason, Israel, the human psyche, is called Ben Yakir, the dear child of Chochmah. Because Yod He Vav He, which is Chokma, has given unto him, unto Tifereth, the human soul, a better portion than that of the proselytes. Meaning, talking about the Bodhisattvas here. The children, Bodhisattvas of Israel, are also called those whom I, Chokma, carry in my bosom. That is to say, in my beautiful land, which is Tifereth, the heart, his kingdom, to which Bodhisattvas having ascended after psychological death, they shall go out no more. When we talk about kingdoms, we always state the kingdom of the father is the head. The kingdom of the son, Chokhmah, is a heart. So if you wonder where well, I'm gathering all of those elements, all of those, all of those souls, when I am annihilating my ego, it's in Tifereth. There is, because that's the kingdom of Chokhmah. When Chokhmah incarnated in Jesus said to the, the thief of the right side, remember me when you are in your kingdom, right? People say, well, what is the kingdom of Homa? It's the heart. And because that good thief, which means he's still in the fire of the devil in a sexual act, is a good alchemist. Because he's also crucified. And that is what the cross means. The one that is crucified in the right is the good thief. Meaning, all of us which are still in the sexual force to the devil. What devil? We are the devil. The last that we have, of course. And we are creating with it because we are following the Lord. Chokhmah, the Christ. And that's why Jesus 
or Jochma incarnated in Jesus says, I'm telling you, today you will be me with me, you will be with me in paradise. What paradise? His kingdom, his heart. And it's what every Bodhisattva enjoys. If that Bodhisattva dies and didn't finish his, his job, he goes into the kingdom of Chochma because he's a Bodhisattva. And the kingdom of Chochma is a heart. It's compassion. This is why we understand. The scripture proceeds further. Cattle and creepy thing and beast of the earth after their kind sex. Teaching us that hayot, beasts, are nefesh haya, living souls, who differ in their natures and forms, though animated with the same neshamot haim, breath and life. So human souls, though differing the one from the other, according to yesod, Nevertheless, derive their origin from the same divine source, Haya, Yodhava Elohim, Bina. Do you understand that? As I was explaining, all of us, everything derives from Yodhava Elohim. But it depends how you use your thought, your sexual energy, is how you are different. Of course, the people of Israel, which symbolizes the alchemists, that gather all the archetypes in their heart, the kingdom of Homa, are different. This is what the Bible called the living soul. And that's related with the eighth precept that we talked today and we finished with it. You have questions? Nabuchadnezzar is uh, the king of Babylon at that time when, when uh, Daniel was in uh, that area of Iraq, Babylon. And of course, uh, at that time, all kings knew about sexual alchemy. And, uh, but all those kings uh, and traditional uh, followers of the doctrine always have ego. And they always have their idiosyncrasies, their theories, the way of following the doctrine. And that's the gold that everybody, because if you see it right now in, in this day and age, everybody built a gold statue according to their beliefs. And they stop you in the, in, in the, in the street. Do you know that you are going to be saved only by Jesus? Follow with this because, you know, and the person believe very firmly that the way that they believe in Jesus is their way. They don't need to be saved. Or other people uh, that follow other religions believe in other ways. Right? Every religion has its theories. So that's what Nabucodonosor symbolizes. The intellect, the king of Babylon, which is our own psychosomatic nature. And if you want to understand more about this Nabucodonosor, Watch the beautiful opera Nabucco by Verdi. It's beautiful. If you interpret that psychologically, alchemically, cabalistically, you will enjoy that Nabucco opera of Verdi. It's, um, I know that it was made, it made Nebo was the mercury. Mm. And then we have the saying at the end that Nadar, that he was just an aggregate. So, but that, that's a good statement. Mercury and the root of the nose, Nazar, yeah. And Nazar, according to the Master Samael, relates to the nose, so the straight it's, nose. It's, and it also means, I think, in Hebrew, it's um, like it's grass that he's grabbing. But, it, but um, it's interesting because he creates the calf, but he also puts them in the furnace. You, know? so who you mean, not the calf, I mean the, uh, the golden, golden statue. So yeah, that's a good question. Who is Nabucodonosor? <laughs> is like you said, the mercury rising to the head. I mean, this statement that you are stating is easy to understand when you know alchemy. 
Nebuchadnezzar, of course, is the king of Babylon. He's the alchemist, in other words, that is doing the work. But if that alchemist is not destroying the ego, obviously he's building a golden statue. It is precisely what happened in Gnosticism. When somebody reaches the fifth initiation of Mayor Mysteries, he builds a golden statue and likes, oh, worship me. I am a master of the fifth initiation. And if you don't worship me, you go to hell. Of course, this is uh, worshiping an idol, right? It was the master said we, we should stop uh, uh, worshiping clay idols, which are, of course, individuals in the physical plane, which is clay, malkut, the dust of the earth, that believe themselves to be golden statues. That's one of the symbols that we can say about when you are an alchemist, where you know how to transmute, and you are building initiations, degrees, and finally, unfortunately, for them, unfortunately for them, for those initiates, they always fa uh, find followers that worship them. And of course, they are not uh, following the true God, which is the spinal column. But this is a statue of gold, and they think that that's the way. But when you know alchemy, like Sadrach, Mesach, and Abednego, says, we are not worshiping that gold. I'm sorry. We are working. And to prove you, put us there into the furnace. We are continuing to work, uh, talking about this Nabucodonosor. Uh, next, uh, precepts, which relate to certain uh, other precepts that we are going to talk in relation with, you know, Nabucodonosor, when he became a beast because he was worshiping himself. Well, we didn't finish that, but the, more questions? Kabbalistically speaking, in the head, we have the Holy Trinity. The Father, which is in the magnetic center of Nazar. When we transmute our Nabucco, our Mercury, that magnetic center is vibrating. But the Holy Spirit is in, Bina, is in, the, in the pineal gland. And uh, the sun is in the pituitary. That is the trinity in the head. We will say the top of the tree of life. But these three logoi forces, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, relate to the entirety of our body. If the head is the kingdom of the Father, we will say, if the Father is Keter, where is the kingdom of the Son, which is in the pituitary land? Well, that kingdom of the sun is in the heart. That's why uh, any bodhisattva that represents Chochmah, the Christ, the universal cosmic Christ, as Jesus, always is represented with the heart in flames, showing the heart, because that's the kingdom. That's the kingdom of the sun. The, the, the heart is also really with the sun. In other words, it's a person, an initiate, that has stopped being sectarist is no longer following the moon, which relate to sectorism, to clans. Here, for instance, in the earth, you said, okay, if I enter into initiation, I will enter into nirvana, and we will out of these clans of the earth, these groups, you know? But you discover in nirvana, there are also clans. You see? In nirvana, you have also clans, different parts, where you find initiates from this root race, or from this race, and different parts, and they are following their tradition also. They return to the earth through their tradition. See, for instance, reincarnations in Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism. All of those souls that follow that tradition, they reincarnate in the same race. And they are masters that also love. They are attached too much to their race. Even in Nirvana, they return in the physical body and want to be continue their work in that race. Right? And that's lunar path related with the spiral path, mechanicity. So clans also are in Nirvana. That's why Master Samael says that when you enter into the direct path, those guys stop you and say, come with us, because they want 
they needed to be in their clans, in their groups. But the revolutionary Borisalva says, I am with all humanity, and I'm helping humanity, no matter what clan, that solar path. And they enter into the direct path beyond Nirvana, and they overcome the temptation of those gods. So first, says the master, we have to avoid the temptations of demons in this physical world. When we conquer that, we build and we went into Nirvana, then you have to overcome the temptation of those gods. And when you do it, you go beyond good and evil. Because they are good. It's in the right side, you know, they're good. And the demons are in the left, down in Klippoth, they're in evil. Doing the work, the alchemical work in the wrong way. But we have to go beyond good and evil. But still now, if we are conscientious of what we're saying, we are in evil. We have to go first to good, and then we have to overcome good. But first overcome evil. What is your question? So the, uh, the left side of the tree of life you were talking about, I, I, may, have, I may have confused things here, so feel, feel free to correct me. The left side of the tree of life is for uh, um, Amon and, and Moab. The, uh, and the, the right side, you said, is for the, the children of Israel. Yeah. The Israel. But then they enter into Binah, which is the left side. Yeah. Um, because the left side is in charge of all the souls. Okay. Is what we're saying in the, in the end, right? Is what you said, entering into the left side, but the tap, the tap. which has nothing to do with the negativity, because the tap of the left side, the left column of the tree of life, is Bina, but Bina is in Asiluth, okay. right? Yeah. And you start seeing clipoth or shells. After that, all the seven uh, sephirot below the, the Trinity, in all the, there are different type of clipots, right? Oh, and that's that's why the uh, the proselyte can only get up to the level of of, of Gabriel and his soul. Yeah, that's the only level. But only those that annihilate the Holy Ghost and gather all of Israel within themselves can enter through the top of Vina, which enters there, simple because they know good and evil. They come from good, he said, but they conquer evil, which is the left side. And then they become an Elohim, knowing good and evil. Right? Those that do not do that, well, I'm going to talk in another lecture about that, but we're going to give you a, a hint about it. Meorot, we talk about that, right? I mean lights. But if you take the Vav out from the center that makes the word Aur, light, and you put it before the letter Tav of Meorot, and then you read Marut. And Marut is a Hanas Mus that has taken the light from the center column and put it in the left mm -hmm. through fornication. That is a Marut, or what we call a Hasnamus. Hmm? A Marut. This is how you read it. And Marut in Hebrew means curses. Another question? So, um, you said that the, uh, in the, the third initiation, um, that is when Vav is placed between the two Hays yeah. of, the, of the sacred name. So, what was the sacred name before the third initiation? Is, is it just uh, yod hey hey well, The sacred name is always yod hey vav hey okay. but in you. Oh. When you put that hey, I mean that Vav, mm -hmm. in the third initiation, and then you can say, now I am a physical example of yod he vav -He because I created my Vav in the third day, which is the astral body. Because the astral body is the mediator between your physical body and God. And that's why you are, you are placing that Vav, means you place that astral body there. You can say now that you are immortal in the astral plane, because that's the Vav of the third day. So you have the Vav. Before you didn't have, you have only yod He above, which is Ja. And below, your physicality, which is He. Well, where is Vav? The river, Nahea. Where is it? Well, you have to reach a third initiation, and then you will build that Vav. 
And then you will say, behold, an initiate where the name of God can be read. yod hey vav hey But before that, that name of God is not, uh, is not written in us because of fornication. More questions? <coughs> Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Thank you.